The subcommittee will come to order. Without objection, the chair is authorized to declare recess at any time. We welcome everybody to today's hearing on a free press and protecting journalists. I'll remind everybody that the guests in the chamber are uh, guests and you're free to be here, but this is uh, no audience participation in the hearing. Uh, this is a hearing and we're gonna conduct it accordingly. I will now recognize myself for an opening statement. Our liberty depends on the freedom of the press and that cannot be limited without being lost. Those words were true when Thomas Jefferson wrote them in 1786, and they are still true today. The First Amendment to the Constitution guarantees <coughs> freedom of the press and prohibits the federal government from making any law abridging that freedom. In his concurrence in the New York Times versus the United States, Justice Hugo Black stated, in the First Amendment, the Founding Fathers gave the free press the protection it must have to fulfill its essential role in our democracy. The press was to serve the governed, not the governors. The framers of the Constitution hailed the freedom of the press as the most important political liberty and the keystone upon which all our other freedoms rely. As is still the case today, journalists are often the first to expose government abuse, waste, fraud, and encroachments on the personal freedoms we hold dear. Sadly, the freedom of the press is under attack in our country from multiple angles, the White House, activist judges, and mainstream media networks. For example, the Obama White House illegally spied on investigative journalists Cheryl Atkinson by allegedly hacking into her cell phone and computer to determine the identity of a confidential source. We also saw the Obama administration take an adversarial position regarding freedom of the press when it sought to silence anyone blowing the whistle on the federal government's waste and abuse by seizing the phone records of Associated Press reporters and editors who used source materials to write stories. The phone records seized were not just those owned by the Associated Press, but also personal home and cell phones. The seizure of these records was such an alarming step by the federal government that a coalition of 50 news organizations, including ABC, CNN, The New York Times, and The Washington Post, submitted a letter of protest to then Attorney General Eric Holder about the raid, which stated that the administration's action called into question the very integrity of the Department of Justice policies toward the press and its ability to balance on its own its police powers against the First Amendment rights of the news media and the public's interest in reporting on all manner of conduct. The Obama administration's war on a free press showed us that executive interference has a chilling effect that disincentivizes whistleblowers and sources from co coming forward with critical information. That chilling and eventually freezing out effect harms the quality and integrity of journalism on a major scale. Meanwhile, we have seen the Biden Garland Justice Department arrest and prosecute journalist Steve Baker who was reporting from the U.S. Capitol building on January 6th on the events that took place inside the Capitol. We also recently saw a federal court order, investigative journalist Catherine Herridge, to identify a confidential source and then hold her in contempt when she exercised her First Amendment right to maintain the source's confidentiality. First Amendment advocates on both sides of the aisle have warned that government actions such as this could have devastating consequences for a free press. Around that same time, CBS News terminated Ms. Herridge's employment and took unprecedented actions with regards to her belongings, including source materials. CBS News officials reportedly boxed up and seized some of the materials in her office, including her investigative files and laptop computer, with the intent to search through items to segregate materials Ms. Herridge developed or worked on for CBS News. CBS News plans surge through Ms. Herridge's materials threatened to trample upon her First Amendment rights and could have divulged confidential sources stemming from her previous work with other networks. Along those same lines, we have also seen the federal government seek to impermissibly shape news stories, even coercing social media companies to censor and remove content on their platforms relating to foreign influence peddling by the president and his family. Today's hearing is about defending our fundamental liberty and protecting journalists and their sources from these attacks. We will examine the federal government's infringement on the freedom of the press and examine the prospects for a federal shield law. On July 19th, 2023, the House Committee on the Judiciary with a vote of 23 to zero, that doesn't often happen in the House Judiciary Committee, 23 to zero, favorably reported on the Protect Reports from Exploita Exploitative State Spying or Press Act. In January of this year, the full House passed the Press Act by a voice vote. 
The Press Act was written to prohibit the federal government from compelling journalists to identify a source, as well as any records, contents of a communication, documents, or information obtained or created by journalists in the course of their work. The significance of the Press Act cannot be understated. It ensures a free press, independent from an executive branch that seeks to attack or harass journalists in order to identify their confidential sources. Now that the House has done its job and stood up to fight for the freedom of the press, it is now the Senate's turn to take up this legislation to continue Congress's commitment to protecting our fundamental freedoms. Our constitu constitutional guarantee of a free press is under attack. It is our job to stand up for that right and protect journalists and their sources. I look forward to hearing from all of our distinguished witnesses today who will all bring unique personal and professional perspectives to this important issue. Please note that a joint schedule of Congress is scheduled for 11 o'clock a.m. and the committee will recess for the duration of that session and gavel back in shortly after. I now yield to the ranking member for her opening statement.